So David, you're, you're less than six months into being the CIO of the state of Colorado. You came to the state from the city of Denver. Uh, how have those couple months been? What have, what have been some of the things that you've gotten into already? Yeah, thanks for asking. You know, it's been a, um, a really uh, fun journey to after 16 years in Denver, a lot of that in operations, the last five as CIO of technology services to sort of go up the hill and see what things are like at the state, what's the same, what's different. Still public sector, still CIO, but and still a lot of the same challenges, uh, but learning how things work differently, the different types of services we provide, how the state interacts with the counties. You know, it's a it's sort of a one-to-one -one relationship when you're a city and county to the state. It's just you're a city or you're a county or you're both, and then you're interacting with the state of Colorado. But when you're the state of Colorado, you've got 64 counties, many cities, all of which you're interacting with, and so you end up with a little bit of a sort of a least common denominator kind of a problem, which is you, know, you can't just uh, have your services, your interactions tailored towards the most advanced um, of those cities and counties. You have to think about where everybody is in the mix, and that, that presents a challenge. Um, and I would say still, but it, the similarities are, I'm still in the business of unlocking the potential of people. I'm still in the business of innovation. Uh, my job, in a sense, is I have more people, 1,100 people in, in Office of Information Technology. And it's really my job is to unlock the potential of the people who will unlock the potential of the people down the road, right? Because we have such a big organization. We're doing so many fantastic things. That's really the challenge. It's not a technology challenge. Uh, it's a people challenge, yeah. So Colorado over the years has been you know, super strategic and very focused on, on specific things at specific times. There was a big cyber push a couple years ago, big broadband push now. Uh, what are some of those big focuses for you right now? Yeah, I mean, some of these might be surprising, maybe not. I think uh, a couple of the changes we've made just from last fiscal year to this fiscal year is actually a greater emphasis on calling out security. And I think where we're going with that is not just cybersecurity, not just the prevention side of things, but the disaster recovery side of things. And that's a fundamental sort of paradigmatic um, mind shift of, of we have to think about things are going to go wrong. How are we going to recover from that? How are we going to recover from a technology perspective? But also do we have our continuity of operations, our continuity of government plans in place so we can fall back on spreadsheets on paper, all that kind of stuff, because the world's changing, the threat actors are, are real. So that kind of an emphasis on security, maybe in a way that cities and states haven't wanted to recognize, but that is now all too commonplace and we just have to prepare. Uh, I think the other area is just a, a real focus on agency partnership. We provide value as an IT department through the agencies by and large. So we have to make sure they're successful at delivering their mission that means we have to put on an, innovative, an innovation mindset, not a technology first mindset, and think about their missions as coming before our own, and ours really supporting theirs. So those are a couple of things. Um, you know, every, every state here is talking about technology debt. Every state here pretty much is talking about broadband. Those are, remain key focus areas. I, I haven't heard as much about accessibility, but I think accessibility, you know, it's one of our five strategic goals. And again, sort of similar to what I was saying about, about security, the way we're trying to think about that is not just accessibility for the ADA community, but accessibility for all. One population I think is really important to think about as the baby boomers sort of reach a different age is the elderly, right? And how do we make sure that their lives are enabled in ways that maybe the preceding generation, the technology really wasn't there for them. Uh, they couldn't use it to make their lives better. We can't keep saying, we're not paying attention to that group. These, these folks, which will eventually be all of us, you know, we gotta find ways to allow technology into their lives to let them live their lives the way uh, we want all Coloradans to live. I, I mean, Colorado, what you all have done in accessibility over the years is, is, is nothing short of incredible. Uh, we've, we've recognized it in the State Scoop 50 Awards a couple of years and, and just a, a really impressive group of folks working on that effort. Um, you know, how have you worked, uh, and, and you may not have done this yet, but, but how have you heard from other states about their accessibility? Again, it hasn't been mentioned a, a ton here, yeah. but, but how, how do you want to share some of that knowledge and, and creativity that you've come up with to solve this problem? Yeah, I think it's a good point. You don't hear about it that much. I think I'd be surprised, like in the top 10 things that the CIOs talk about, I don't think that's in the top 10, right? 
I would be surprised if next year we don't see it there. And I think we need to, th you hear all about, you hear a lot about equity, but you don't hear about accessibility. And I think those two are really interlinked. So if we're thinking about equity in the right way and not from an everything needs to be equal, but everything needs to be adjusted in order to provide equity, um, then I think the accessibility conversation becomes a lot more interesting because essentially what we can do there is take what would otherwise be a ceiling, the compliance of accessibility, and make that a floor, make that the minimum, and then say, what else can we do? How far can we push this envelope? What can we do to innovate past what is minimally required? But when you talk about accessibility just in its sort of uh, you know, accessibility 1.0 kind of state, everybody's focused on just getting to a compliance level. And that's not, I mean, it's, it's good, it's better than nothing, but my job is to sort of open up everybody's minds to, let's not think about that as the ceiling, let's think about it as the floor. How far can we go on this stuff? It's, it's a great philosophy just in, in leadership in general, and, and I think that that's something that, you know, we, we've been talking a lot at this conference about data and sort of getting ready for AI and data in the context of cyber, all of these things, and, and I think that the, you know, uh, we are talking in a session earlier about data quality and data hygiene, that's one of those things too, where if we can up that quality even more, then what does it open up down the line? Uh, what do you think in that in that realm? And in, in that yeah, area? I mean, I, yeah. So I think about. I mean, one of my favorite charts is that one about the data explosion, and you know, it's an exponential growth of data, and everybody, you know, a lot of folks jump up and down. Yeah, that's great. And then what you realize is the human mind can't ingest and do anything useful with all this data most of the time, and that's where I see the possibilities of AI countering, really not, not countering, but sort of augmenting that, that growth of data, right? And making it useful in ways that we otherwise wouldn't. You just see so many cases where AI can act as a multiplier on the human resources, can take the droll, you know, repetitive tasks that are just not very value added and take those away from us as humans so that we can do the more value added. So you think about, I don't know, child care, child caseworkers, child welfare caseworkers, and they're trying to do all this work, but they've got all this paperwork to fill out, and the paperwork's taken up 50% of their time that they could have been out in the field doing work to help kids have better lives in Colorado. How could AI create their reports for them? How could AI help synthesize the data they have? How could AI do analysis to help them understand where the outliers are, maybe where they should be focusing their attention so they're not spreading their efforts evenly but actually focusing where the, where the impact could be the greatest. So all of those places are where AI and other technologies if, and can use data in ways that, while it's available, all the data's there, it, it's not being synthesized and analyzed in ways that are actually driving behaviors. That's where I see the possibilities. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, I got to ask you, since you were, you were a city CIO, I have to ask you about my favorite topic. You touched on it a little bit at the beginning, uh -huh. but state and local collaboration is something that I think about all the time and is, for most of the folks in this room, I think they'd agree with me that it's been a huge missed opportunity for them over the years. Uh, what are you thinking about that? Your, uh, your successor in Denver is also a former state CIO. Right. Uh, what are you thinking about that collaboration and, and working with cities and counties across Colorado yeah. to, uh, to, to kind of change the game? Yeah, I was talking to Bill Kehoe, who's the state CIO of Washington, and I think was an LA County, and King County, Washington before, and we were talking about the similarities, but I don't think, I could be wrong, but I don't think any other state has quite the dynamic of Colorado and that we have the former state CIO, as you said, in my former role in the city and county of Denver and vice versa. And so it's a really great opportunity for us to put our heads together. It's funny you ask, I was just thinking about that today in the last session, how Suma Nalapati is, is her name, and I need to get together and sort of brainstorm where are those opportunities. The one I was thinking about, frankly, was constituent identity, uh, which if we're going to do this the right way, we really want to have the counties there. And where I see the possibilities is Denver, a city like Denver has a lot of resources that a lot of the smaller cities and counties don't have. So how can Denver partner with the state, the two probably biggest resourced IT departments in, in the state, in the public sector, and collaborate in ways that are then scalable to the other counties. So what can we do that then the other 63 counties can say, 
like, can take advantage of second mover advantage and say, I don't have to invest all that time. Denver and the state of Colorado have already figured out a path for me. And now my choice is just, do I want in or do I want out, right? And that's, I think that's where the real power of this whole thing is, is taking the big dog, so to speak, and having us spend some of the resources and, 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 the, and the leadership time to get that stuff done. Yeah, that's really cool. Last question, and then I'll let you go. I've been talking to you too long, I'm sure, but uh, when you, you know, when we meet again this fall in New Orleans for NASIO Annual, uh, it'll be, you know, you'll be coming up on a year in the job a couple months after that. Uh, what do you hope that you've gotten done between now and then that we can talk about then? Yeah, we are, that's a great point. So six months from now, where I would want to see us. Right now, I've got my executive team hired and in place. That was my first order of business and organized. We've also turned the ship. Not, you know, I, I credit all the people who have come before me, just as I'm sure they credit the people who come before them. We're all just trying to make the, leave the place better than we found it, right? Had to turn the ship slightly towards security and a different way of thinking about security in terms of disaster recovery and more focus on the missions of the agencies we support, now we're ready to take off. Like the ship is pointed in the right direction and now it's about switching from, uh, we use this phrase, uh, 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 admire the problem is the phrase, right? And, the, and, and what we mean is sometimes we just talk about this stuff for too long. We know what we need to do. It's all laid out. We don't need more plans. We don't need more strategy. It's all right in front of us. We just need to make some decisions and execute against them. And that's what I want. I want to look back six months from now and say, yeah, now we're the, the ship is moving. It's not just positioned, it's moving in the right direction and getting stuff done. 